It's time once again for me to give my responses to your responses to blogs that I've posted here at Kermode Uncut. There's been a couple of blogs that I've done recently that have got loads of responses from you. I did a blog a short while ago saying that Lynn Ramsey's We Need to Talk About Kevin was partly born out of her failure to make Lovely Bones and saying, are there any other really interesting unmade movie projects? Loads of responses. Here are just a few. This from Daniel, meant ironically, I think. I hear Larry Clark pitch for the first Harry Potter movie. That would have been interesting. Uh, this from Sofa Fruit. I would have loved to see David Cronenberg's Total Recall with William Hurt in the main role. The film has such a Cronenbergian cerebral plot. Funnily enough, that's one of the films like the Vincent Ward Alien 3 that has achieved a kind of cult status in, uh, in, in sci-fi fans' minds. I remember reading an issue, I think it was Cine Fantastique, in which they dedicated an awful lot of time to the various versions of Total Recall that had never made it to the screen. And certainly, the Cronenberg project sounded very, very interesting. This from 24 Frames. Cluzo's Inferno, end of. There is a brilliant documentary about Henri-Georges Clouseau's failure to make Inferno, which features fantastic outtakes and test footage and little fragments of what the, the finished film might have been like. And personally, I'm of the opinion that the documentary itself is such a great work that it kind of justifies the failure of Clouseau to make the film. I mean, it's an extraordinary visual piece. I don't know whether it ever would have come together coherently, but Henri-Georges Clouseau's Inferno, the documentary, is a terrific film. Moving on, this from Sereni Cerrone. Guillermo del Toro has been trying to get Mountains of Madness, his H.P. Lovecraft adaptation, off the ground since before Pan's Labyrinth, and he came awfully close this year, but the studio balked at the ambitious price tag, so he's off to do Pacific Rim instead. Since there are no quality Lovecraft adaptations, I can only hope del Toro can prove he's worth every penny and try again in the future. I know a lot of people think that Lovecraft has been terribly ill-served by cinema. One word, reanimator. This from Lorenz, um, this was the first of many comments on this subject. I wonder what the uncompleted Sergio Leone film on the German siege of Leningrad, obviously being Stalingrad, in World War II would have looked like. I heard he was about to start shooting when he died in 1989. And this from Adam, David Lean had planned to direct Nostromo, a fictitious story of a revolution in a South American republic during the turn of the 20th century. For half a decade, he struggled to adapt Joseph Conrad's dense novel into a screenplay, and he died weeks before the filming was due to begin. And then this from Batman fan, on the subject of Alan Moore's Watchmen. Snyder's version is deeply flawed, yeah, and then some. But what about the version that was supposed to happen before it? Paul Greengrass was linked to Watchmen before Born Supremacy. In fact, Greengrass came on the Radio 5 show. He did a down-the-line interview when he was, as far as I remember, he was on what was to become the set of his version of Watchmen. He had some of the props, and he was in pre-production. It was all set to go, then it never happened. Also, of course, Terry Gilliam was uh, linked to Watchmen, and uh, Batman fan goes on, how Gilliam would have managed to make Watchmen back in the early 90s is beyond me. I think technically back then it wouldn't have been possible. Even with Snyder's huge budget and fanboy attitude, I continue to believe that Watchmen, my favourite graphic novel of all time, remains unfilmable. And now onto a subject which is particularly close to my heart. Uh, I did a blog about Silent Running, how much I love Silent Running. And I said in passing that uh, Silent Running is a better film than 2001. And this lit the blue touch paper. Here are just some of your responses. This from Marcuse Muse. I watched this about a year ago on your recommendation, Mark, and I've got to say it's one of the rare times I disagree with you. I hated it. I didn't just not like it, I really disliked it. It was so self-important and dull. The central character was a maniac who I hated. Furthermore, if you haven't bought into the hippie message of the film, the schmaltzy quality that you're referring to is no longer endearing, but toe-curling. This from uh, Joe, I had said that the thing that I loved about Silent Running was it was so much a film you know, about, about humans, about emotion, whereas 2001 is much more sort of cold film, much more of a clinical film, much more of a scientific film. Joe says, 2001 is a film about humanity, Silent Running is a film about a human. This from some fella called Lime. Mark, I've only seen Silent Running once, but I thought it needed a second viewing to get the measure of it because, and I've wanted to tell you this for ages, those Joan Baez songs are awful. When she asked you if the film was any good, because I met her and she hadn't seen it, you should have told her it was great until you started warbling. And the subject of the soundtrack came up time and time again. Uh, somebody pointed out that obviously the score is written by Peter Shickley, a very famous composer. Uh, it was just Joan Baez who's responsible for those two songs. I love those Joan Baez songs. I love the Peter Shickley score. But time and time again, those of you who don't like Silent Running picked on the score. 
Here's an interesting post from Timothy J. Swan. Those who have discussed the soundtrack of Silent Running, the post-rock electronica band 65 Days of Static have recently written, toured, and are about to release an alternative soundtrack to the film. The first song released from it, Burial Scene, is absolutely beautiful. Several people have mentioned this. In fact, I've been meaning for a long time to try and catch a performance of Silent Running with the 65 Days of Static score. I'd be very interested to know if anyone else has seen it, what they think of it. Uh, this from Jeff 8. I get so tired of people blasting Joan Baez's songs from the movie. The songs were a perfect reflection of that movie in the early 70s. If you can watch the ending and not get somewhat teary-eyed, you are doing better than me. This from Ashley Weatherall. I can't watch Silent Running. By the time we get to the last images of the robot with the watering can tending the flowers to the warblings of Joan Baez, I literally can't see the screen through my tears. And I don't even like Joan Baez. Oh, sod it. I might as well just get the bloody Blu-ray. At very least, I can have a good cry when the wife is out of the house. To finish with, I'd just like to mention this from Generic Mammal, an interesting post which uh, harks back to something I mentioned earlier on about me talking about Silent Running being a human film and 2001 being more cold and clinical. It refers to something many of you picked up on. Silent Running was one of my favourite films as a child and a young man as well, until I saw it again a few years ago and I was embarrassed at how sentimental and illogical it was. This not-human complaint about 2001 is also supposedly why Tarkovsky made Solaris and many of you picked up on that, but this is one phrase I want to end on here. Kubrick's film is nearly unique in that by denying a central character, the film becomes about the human race and not just one man's story. It's a good point, very well made, but I would say that the central character in Silent Running becomes emblematic of the human race. Or maybe I'm just a soppy old hippie.